now, Pittsburgh's best sports show is about to begin. Call us or tweet us. we got things to talk about on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. All right, Dan Rice, thanks very much. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to a Wednesday night edition of the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call right here on Pittsburgh CW. You can call us on the Bordis and Bordis hotline, which is 412-575-2600. If you would rather tweet, it's at KD Pomp at Gene Collier. We'll begin with the Pirates who played a baseball game. It was football weather, snow squalls, brisk winds, wind chill at 21 miles an hour. Not many people there, those who did. Uh, braved it, seemed to have a good time, but the Pirates had a 2-0 lead real quick. Josh Bell, two-run slam in the first inning into the shrubbery of the batter's eye. After that, Yvonne Nova ran into some problems. Brian Dozier had a home run. They tied the game. Pittsburgh takes the lead on a column. Moran RBI, and then four in the sixth, bunch of doubles in a row, and some very interesting um, you know, observations about that inning because the Pirates not only went through Nova, they went through Nevaraskis and Smoker and... They end up losing tonight 7-3. to three. So Gene Collier, outstanding columnist of the Post-Gazette, the undefeated season is over. Yeah, and thanks, Bob. Bonus coverage tonight. We start 10 seconds early. Yeah, you get and, paid extra, and, by the way. And, Check your oh, paycheck. Good, good. I will. And thanks for going over to the Pirate game because uh, uh, very few people did. If I were the Pirates, I would be encouraged by tonight's attendance, whatever it was. If you can get one person to go out and watch baseball on a night like tonight, you're doing something good. Well, they had more than that, but That's what you probably said. less than... About 600, you said. I don't know. I counted that many, and then yeah. I lost track. I saw Bob Nutting at the ballpark. I guess he thought he was at Seven Springs looking for that ski lift somewhere. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I mean, this is a, kind of a familiar story already with the Pirates. They, you know, they get, uh, you know... F- decent to good starting pitching and then they go into the bullpen and they never know uh, what's going to happen. And one good thing that came out of the bullpen tonight, I thought, Bob, was um, Tyler, with, Glass uh, Tyler Glass now, right? Uh, you know, he got to work a couple of innings and this is going to help him develop. He looked pretty good. Uh, so that, that was a positive. And Josh Bell with that big homer, you know, halfway up the batter's eye in the first inning, that was a good thing to see. Uh, so, yeah, they, they won't go 162-0 and and so I'll be wrong. That's, all, that's what I had them at. <laughs> I will say this about Tyler Glass now. He was my pick to be the most improved player. Uh, I just felt that the stuff is too good, and you saw it again tonight. Now, he still walked a couple, gave up a run, but he had five strikeouts. And when he believes in his stuff, he can be very, very good out there. A Burt Blylevin type of curve ball to go along with a fastball that could reach 97. He struck out Miguel Sano with that later in the game. But the final is in. It's 7-2 to two as the Pirates, uh, or 7-3, to three, lose that game. So tomorrow Burt the Cincinnati Reds. in the Reds, ballpark. He was. Yeah. Remember Burt Blylevin? I'm just going to interrupt that. Wicked, at you will could do that. You get paid for that, too. <laughs> So call us at 412-575-2600. Meantime, the Penguins face a very important game tomorrow. It's the Columbus Blue Jackets. And basically, I would classify it as a winner-take-all with regard to home ice advantage in the playoffs. They're both tied at 96. And last night, in fact, three of the last four games, Columbus has spotted the other team a pretty big lead. And they've come back to win two and then lose in an overtime to get an extra point in Vancouver. But last night, they were down 4-1, to one, fought back, tied it. On an Artemi Panarin goal, went to overtime. Then Pierre-Luc Dubois puts home the game winner, 5-4. to four. So, Gene, this game will mean home field or home ice. And, I, and like, to me, I've always probably. said home ice is very important, and I think <laughs> it's worth playing for. Yeah, probably will determine who finishes second, and, and thus will play the third-ranked team, um, Columbus, Philadelphia. I suppose New Jersey even has a chance to be that, pers- that team. New Jersey um, has two games to play. Um, yeah. uh, actually, three games to play. I think they have one in hand. No, no. I think they, they have, have two, two left, right. So if they win both, they'll end up with 99 points. So if the Penguins lose to Columbus, right? And lose I don't think they Ottawa. will, but if they do, they will. that's 98. And even if they do come up with, or 96, they'll fall short of the Devils if the Devils win their remaining two. Right. So I don't know. Interesting stuff. Uh, and we'll find out what happens tomorrow in that game. It should be a lot of atmosphere at the Nationwide o- Arena. Those fans are pretty charged up for the Blue Jackets, only to watch the Penguins kind of uh, take a lot of the enthusiasm away from a lot of teams. We'll see if they can do that tomorrow. Again, Sergei Bobrovsky has given up a lot of goals recently, and you know what the Penguins have done with him. Also, Masters. Uh, my pick to win this is Jordan Spieth. Gene, do you have a uh, pick? Yeah, just, uh, Jason Day. Jason uh, Day. I like what he did at uh, Torrey Pines. But I also have a dark horse, and it is Hideki Matsuyama. Who's been very good yeah. in majors. Yes, uh, Hideki, may, he's, he's overdue. He's been in the top ten recently a mm-hmm. lot, but you got to crack through that. We'll see how it goes. But uh, we saw today the uh, par three, which is always interesting. Tom Watson at age 68 won the thing. We also saw 
Gary Nicholas Jr., who is Jack's grandson, caddy for him. And then at the ninth hole, the final hole, Jack says, you want to hit a shot? And he said, sure. Steps up, hits a beautiful shot to the ninth hole, on top of the little swale, and then it navigates itself into the hole for a hole in one. But that wasn't the real interesting story. It was Tony Finau. And if you've missed this, I'll show it to you tonight, 11 o'clock on KDK TV Sports. I told Gene about it, that he uh, hit a great shot on seven, par three, made it uh, spin all the way from right to left into the hole, hole in one, and then he celebrates a la Bill Gramatica. And he, I don't know what he did to his ankle, but he had to stop. He, he, it looked ugly. Gene, you saw it. Yeah, it looked uh, like it was he may just not play. Okay. I don't know what his status yeah, is. And he kind of popped it back into place. Yeah. Either that he's incredibly double-jointed or he's going to be yeah, out for six months. I mean, I hope he plays. I mean, whether he plays or not at this point, I mean, he's, he's stolen the pre-tournament coverage with this one. <laughs> Tony Finau, 34th in the world, but number one on the sports pages <laughs> tomorrow. We're going to take your calls here at 412-575-2600, so get on the line. Let us hear from you on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. We're here seven nights a week on Pittsburgh. Seven City. nights a week.